him back out there on Tuesday, working with the running backs. Just what has his progress looked like to this point in the Well, first off, Branson had a really uh, tremendous spring practice. Uh, unfortunately, he got injured during the spring ball. And uh, he's done a really, really good job of uh, going to treatment and taking the mental part of his game to the next level because he physically couldn't do anything. And uh, he's been a really, really good leader. Uh, he's been exceptional in the classroom and also leading some of the younger guys in reference to uh, Rod Robinson, uh, kind of being a mentor to him. So I'm very pleased with his progress. It's really exciting to see him back on the field, starting to move around a little bit. And uh, the way we structure practice and have our walkthroughs, we're able to get almost close to full speed reps without all the banging and clanging. So it's, it's very good to uh, see Branson back on the football field. Bill, uh, how you doing? Hey, uh, Chip. What's, what's it been like uh, to be reunited with your old pal, Mike Bubba? <laughs> Uh, Mike's a tremendous coach, uh, really not reunited. He was here last year and uh, he was a sponge under Coach Munkin. And he's going to do a tremendous job for us. Uh, I think the way we're geared and structured under Coach Smart, we didn't change a lot from a philosophical standpoint. We're still status quo on what we're going to do. Our kids didn't have, have a lot of learning. Coach Bobo is definitely going to implement his style he will have his way of doing things and calling plays, but in turn, we'll still uh, find out who the best players are, put those guys in the best position. We'll still do a lot of things that we've done over the last three years under Coach Munkin. And uh, I look forward to you know working with Bobo leading, uh, moving forward. Uh, another interesting point is we're still going to have input as coaches. Uh, we kind of deviate a lot of things up on the staff and we all present our ideas uh, to Coach Bobo and he will take what he likes and he'll tell us what he doesn't like and he'll be in charge of calling those plays on game day. Coach, you guys have kind of been banged up even back in the spring. I'm curious as, as a coach of your position group, how do you make sure there's no drop off from one guy to the other and how do you make sure the next guy is prepared? Uh, good question. I always got to make sure the next guy's ready. So the expectation is prepare everyone like they're a starter. Uh, and just like I spoke earlier about the way we practice, we have two, two balls on two different fields to maximize reps. So the bottom half of our roster is always getting developed and they're able to see uh, the mistakes that they're making or if they're doing things the correct way. And we're able to define roles, we're able to decide who's going to be the starter based on how they're doing during practice. But right now with the injured guys, we're just really trying to win the moment right now and not worry about the outcome or looking forward. So we're going to be where our feet are and just really, really concentrate on our day to day and not look past the day that we have in front of us. Yeah, with Kendall Milton, we saw him in practice the other day. Just how is he doing physically? And for a guy that has had so many injuries through his career, how do you as a coach keep his spirits up when you know, may have another one, it seems, right at the start of camp? Uh, he's, he's dealt with injuries, so keeping his spirit up is uh, not very hard. He, he understands it's a physical game, just like we all do. Uh, injuries are going to occur. And the biggest thing for Kendall is he remains a leader for us, and he's a leader in that room. And he still has a great voice uh, and influence on our room and other players on the team. Uh, so I don't see his spirits being down. Uh, he doesn't really second guess anything. It's just unfortunate that he's had injuries since he's been here. And it's, you know, no one's trying to get hurt or want to be hurt as a player. You, as a competitor, which he is, he wants to be out with his teammates. Uh, doing everything he can, but I will say while he's rehabbing, he's, he's, he's maximizing those opportunities. Uh, he's going three times a day. He has outside things he, he does as well as far as yoga and some other uh, massage therapists that comes in. Uh, we're just uh, happy we got him on our team and he's, he's battling through fine. Two-part quick, uh, Kirby talked last week about Cash Jones and his development. What, what have you seen from him? and? Have you gotten a chance to reach out to Sony after he, uh, you know, hung it up last week in the card? 
Yes, uh, first question with Cash. Uh, really, really glad we have him. He's uh, he won our actually he was part of our strongest guys on the team pound for pound, uh, which speaks a lot uh, for him with his size. He's definitely uh, he played last year on special teams. I think he was a starter on kickoff and contributed on other areas in our kicking game. And we still think he would do a great job in that area. He catch, catches the ball well out of the backfield. He's somewhat of a matchup problem for uh, linebackers, uh, very similar to uh, James Cook, uh, Kenny McIntosh, who have served in those roles. Uh, the thing I really, really like about Cash is he's very unselfish. Uh, he goes a thousand percent every single day, and he does it with a smile on his face. So anything you ask of Cash, he's more than willing to do it. And then with Sony, yes, I have spoken with him. He's actually in Boston uh, with his, uh, his, his, his uh, wife and seeing his in-laws uh, right now. He's in good spirits. Uh, he knows the direction he wants to go in life. And you know he had a tremendous career. And he still has an influence on this program and the standard that was set for the running backs that our kids still uh, admire and, and look up to him. Yeah, you mentioned Cash out of the backfield as a pass catcher. How are your other running backs in that aspect of their games? Yes, uh, I will say this with injuries with Kendall and what Branson and even Andrew Paul coming off ACL, uh, you don't get a chance to get those those physical reps, so you lose out on that. So they have to really, really, really do extra, uh, whether it's on their own or me as a coach uh, taking time out and making sure that they're getting those uh, necessary route development and hand development that's needed to, to catch. All of our guys have improved in that area and we can't let we can't let uh, our injuries or not being there be an excuse uh, to not catch the ball. When their numbers called in the passing game, they're expected to catch it and answer the bell. Yeah, speaking of Andrew Paul, just what have you seen from him over the past, you know, eight nine months coming back from that ACL? And where is he at now in terms of getting closer to full speed? Yes, he, he is getting closer. Uh, his confidence is growing daily. Uh, just like anyone that's been through ACL, he was reluctant to wear his brace, uh, and he put the brace back on, took it off. So, him taking the brace off is really a good sign that he's in a good headspace, and. He's really worked hard to get back to where he is. Uh, of course, with camp, you get a little bit worn down. So you got to kind of distinguish between, am I sore or is my knee really, really bothering me? And he's really uh, been very open and honest with our training staff and myself on when he feels uh, like he can go and when he can't. Hey, Coach, uh, I wanted to ask about Roderick uh, Robinson, um, one of your younger guys in the group. What have you kind of seen from him um, through this process, and I mean, especially the opportunities he's maybe gotten with so many injuries going on in that room? Yes, uh, definitely has gotten the opportunity to get a lot of reps, uh, even coming out of spring football. You can see his growth, his development. This is probably the hardest thing he's had to do uh, since being in high school, just going through fall camp. I think that has an impact on most freshmen when they come in, just the hours, the mental and physical toughness that you gotta have to go day to day with the banging and clanging and also just having some, uh, some time constraints where you gotta get off your feet, get up early, go to treatment and do it over and over and over and over for the days we got left in camp, but very happy where he is. Uh, it's basically like uh, you got a flower that you're planting. He's, he, he still needs fertilizing and he has a lot of room to grow. So we're still cultivating Rod as a player, uh, not only as a football player, but just things off the field, how to study film and just kind of put it all together. Coach, I heard you talk about the game plan being a collective effort. You've coached here as a position coach under several different offensive coordinators. Is that, is that something that's been consistent throughout, or is that something y'all have implemented as years have gone by under Coach Monk? Uh I think it's been consistent throughout. I would say when Coach Monken came, 
uh, it became a little bit more detailed and a little bit more organized, oriented, uh, where it's a certain day a coach is going to present this, another day a coach is going to present this area. And I think when he came in, he gave every coach that he assigned an area kind of a sense of pride of the, the game plan. You're taking a piece of the game plan and you're making it your own. But ultimately, uh, it was up to the coordinator whether he wanted to keep or take out or tweak what our other coaches thought that were important in the parts of the game plan. And like I said previously, Coach Bobo is going to do the same exact thing. So nothing's really changing from that perspective. Yeah, going into your eighth season now, you've been here working with a ton of different running backs. How over that time have your views evolved in terms of what you look for, traits you look for when recruiting running backs to come to the University of Georgia? Yeah, um, I would say philosophically where we've gone from the three coordinators that we've had, it's kind of changed because of uh, who we had in the room. Uh, you know, first getting here with Coach Chaney, uh, just establishing that line of scrimmage run game. Uh, plus we had two really good uh, backs that were older that had cared to load and understood running the football and it wasn't a whole lot to teach there. Uh, and kind of progressing to through uh, Coley and even into Monk and getting the backs more involved in the passing game has uh, tremendously uh, increased and I think your recruiting philosophy has to change a little bit to kind of cater to what the coordinator wants. And when Munkin was here, he, uh, he showed that he wanted to have running backs that were able to create things in space, catch the football, create matchups for linebackers. And I think that philosophy will still stand. So it does change according to what that coordinator wants and also the leadership of Coach Smart. So everything still goes through Coach Smart. So we are looking for uh, guys out of talented, guys that can run fast, uh, guys that got vision, things that you really don't have to teach. Um, and then just maximize whatever the redeeming qualities that they have. Coach, uh I know you can't talk specifically about recruits, but you do have three committed in this class. How do you sell three top running backs to all come in the same recruiting class? Uh, I would say that uh, they see the room. We have two seniors in Kendall Milton and um, Dejon Edwards that are leaving the program. Uh, we have Andrew Paul who's come off an injury. Uh, it still takes time for running backs to get their legs up on them. They also saw the fact that Branson was dealing with an injury, and we still hadn't got to our allotted number of six running backs. So we've been under our allotted number. We're basically just getting to six. And I, I really don't, it wasn't really a sale. Uh, like I've said previously, running backs have all flourished here at the University of Georgia, and uh, that's the expectation. They want to be a part of that. And, uh, you know, just being competitive, having the chance to uh, better themselves as men and just the influence of me being in their life, I think, plays a big, big part of uh, you know, that. Where do the running backs stand in, at this point in fall camp in comparison to the last couple of years? Um, we're still a work in progress right now uh, because of the injuries. A lot of uh, guys have had to take a bigger load, speaking of Dejon Edwards and uh, Cash Jones, even our walk-on Saban Clark, his, his workload has increased due to our injuries. Uh, but at the same token, uh, it's my job to prepare who, who's ever available, who's ever healthy, to perform at a, a high level. And we're just really, really concentrating on each day, each moment. Winning those small moment moments without looking into the future, looking at future outcomes is basically how do I get better daily. Now, what specifically is Kendall dealing with? And when you look at the running back room as it stands right now, how confident are you with what you've got when you include the injuries? Um, I'm very confident. Uh, I think we have the right guys. They have the right mindset. Uh, they're, they're working their butts off. Uh, they do extra. As far as 
film study. Uh, they're, they're really connected as a, as a group. Uh, and our offense won't live and die by our running backs. We got really, really good players all over the football field. So I think our running back room will be uh, by committee. Uh, whoever has the hot hand will earn those touches. We'll spread the ball out and find out who needs to touch the ball as the game goes on. You, you talked about when you came in, you had a couple guys that had a lot of experience running the ball, but you've coached up Samir White, James Cook, all those guys. In your years, what is the hardest thing to teach a new running back about playing football? The uh, biggest thing is when you're coming out of high school, you, they don't have an opportunity to pass protect and see the, the multitude, multitude of blitzes and uh, things that especially our defense throws at a running back. So uh, the nonverbal communication between the center quarterback and running back is something that they have to learn. Uh, how physical and big linebackers that are blitzing the running back is, is definitely different because most of the linebackers that we're picking up are bigger than us. Uh, so picking up blitz protection, learning the nonverbal communication is probably the hardest thing for most uh, running backs coming out of high school. And it just takes reps and reps and reps and reps and me getting chewed out and me being a bad coach. And so I just take it to heart and we just continue to grind and get better at it. Good time for maybe two more questions. Anybody? Coach, you talked about getting chewed out. Is is it refreshing that like when you walk around the building, I would imagine Coach Smart kind of gives that smoke to everyone. Is it is it fair game essentially? Oh yeah, everybody get that smoke. So uh, uh, everybody. So Coach Smart has set the standard in this organization. He doesn't let any uh, minute detail go past. There's things that he will remember five, six years ago. And he'll bring that up, and it's like, wow, that's amazing that he remembers that minute detail, or we, we did this on that day. So Coach Smart has done a tremendous job of uh, establishing the culture and, and, and reinventing himself uh, throughout his eight years of, of being here. And, uh, you know, I credit him to a, to a lot of my knowledge. Uh, I think he challenges the entire staff to grow and not be stagnant or stale. He always challenges us to find a different way, find a better way. Are we doing this uh, the right way? Uh, us bringing in other coaches from other programs, we, we lean on those uh, coaches as well. Hey, how did you do this particular drill? So uh, Coach Smart is demanding, but he also allows us to have our voice and opinion uh, while he's still putting his foot on our throat, or giving us that smoke, as you were saying. So. Obviously, you have a lot of experience recruiting here, and now your son is entering his senior year and going on visits and stuff like that. What's it like to be a part of that process for him, and how much of it is dad telling him what to do, and how much of it is Austin letting let you do something? Yeah, uh, well, I try to be a dad and not a coach. Uh, very, very hard to do. Uh, the thing about my son, I would say, is he really embraces that. He comes around our facility as much as possible, and our student athletes that are here are tremendous role models to him and he really enjoys his time with them and he sits in meetings and so he sees how things are supposed to be. You know, unfortunately he's not going in a, a school that has all the resources, bells and whistles that we have. So you know, the big, biggest thing he, he needs to understand is work, be who he is and take what he's learned from watching guys here and, and, and develop himself. And, develop into the best human being he can be. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Dale. Dale. All right, thank y'all.